the next 90 days are going to be very important for you. Right now, we're in the middle of October and after October, November, December, January, you're going to see a surge in hiring. A lot of companies are going to be hiring from January onwards and there is going to be demand for a variety of roles. So you have to be in that position by that time that whatever company's opportunity you get, you are able to see through it till the end. You are able to go till the last round and crack it. You have to be in that position. So how do you come to that position? What do you do for the next 90 days so that you are in that level that any company's interviews you are able to crack? That is exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video. So strap in tight and listen carefully because what you do for the next 90 days is going to decide whether you end up getting selected or rejected. See, these 90 days, this is your winter arc. Okay, you have to put your head down every day, study, code, whatever it is you need to do for the next 90 days to come at that level. And you can easily get a 15 LPA or even a 20 LPA or even a 30 LPA plus job. Sky is the limit in tech as you already know. But there is no shortcut. I'm going to say it before the video, right? There is no shortcut. A lot of people come to me and they say, is there any shortcut we can take? Is there somehow we can memorize this? We can do this. We can, you know, go around it. There's nothing like that. You're going to have to put in time. You're going to have to put in efforts. And three months, 90 days is more than enough to come to that target. Okay. So what I'm going to give you, I'm going to talk about all of the things you need to do for placements in order of priority. Okay. So I'm going to talk about what you need to do, how you need to do, where you need to learn it from, the resources. I'm going to talk about everything, not leaving anything. And the best part, all of the resources I'm going to give you guys in the description box. So you can have a look at that. You don't need to be making notes. Just listen to everything I say carefully. All right. So without any further ado, straight into it. What is the most important thing? Let's talk about, like I said, in order of priority. So the first thing which I have for you, the most important thing that you need to focus on is going to be DSA. See, I know a lot of people don't like DSA. I know a lot of people are avoiding DSA or are pretty much scared of DSA or solving problems. And I've made a video about this. I've made multiple videos about DSA. And the truth is, no matter what says what about DSA, even now, if you look at the hiring patterns, then you will see that if you want to get a good package in a good product based company or even a good startup that pays well like cred or other these other startups right you're going to notice that you will have to come across dsa there is no avoiding it there is no running away from it you have to face dsa so dsa is important that's why i've kept it in the first so i've made an entire roadmap about dsa you can watch that if you want but let me tell you briefly what you need to do for dsa to master problem solving and the truth of it is you don't even need to be a top level coder. You don't need to be a top 0.1 percentile or 1 percentile coder. As long as you're medium on lead code, as long as you're above average on lead code, trust me, you're going to solve 80% of the interview problems. All you need is the right way to practice, which is what I'm going to tell you right now. First thing you need to do is you need to start solving Striver sheet. See, you don't have enough time to solve the 455 one because he has two sheets. One is 455 and one is 181. For the next 90 days, what I want you to do is I want you to solve the 181. Okay, so it has 180 problems. Everything is in pattern. Start solving. Okay, you have to focus more on the medium problems. See, easy problems, you may not get hard problems. Again, you may not get, but lead code medium is the right amount of difficulty that you will be facing in the interviews or in the OA. So you start solving Strivers DSA sheet. It's one of the best sheets out there. I've researched a lot about every sheet. And the conclusion was that Striver Sheet is pretty much the best balance. So start solving that. And after you solve it, see all of the details, of course, I've made an entire video. So I'm not telling, I'm not going too much into depth because that in that video, this video will become too long. But the idea is to start solving Striver Sheet. Monday to Friday, solve Striver Sheet. That's it. Saturday is for revision. One day out of the week, you have to give revision. Do revision on Saturday. Okay, put your head down, no new problems, just revision. Sunday is for contest, so you can either do lead code contest, it happens on the weekend, or you can do virtual contest, anything is fine, and you have to do interview questions. So you have to practice interview questions of the top companies like Google, Amazon, Flipkart, Salesforce, all of these companies, Google interview question and practice them. Now, lead code contests are extremely important, and I know a lot of you guys are not giving lead code contests. I know almost 80% of you, if I open your lead code profile, you don't have any contests given. And that is fine, but for the next 90 days, make a difference. Start giving lead code contests, guys. 
it is extremely important you're going to have to face oa and lead code contests are the best way to prepare for op for online assessment okay so try to give lead code contest try to solve the first two problems around 70 80 90% of the times like you should be at that level ki first two problems you're able to solve and the third problem you're able to solve around 50% of the times because the first is easy second is medium third is medium hard fourth is proper hard fourth one you don't need to do third one you should be doing half half kind of but first and second you should be able to do you should be in that level ki first and second you're able to do okay at least you're able to get the idea of what to do even if you're not able to get to the exact code in the right time that is the idea of it okay so if you do all of these things monday to friday saturday sunday if you do what i said trust me in the next 90 days you're going to see a huge difference in your problem solving level and you're going to feel like a pro coder you're going to feel like you've mastered dsa at least enough to crack the top companies interview so that's pretty much it for dsa i don't want to go too much deeper into it because i made so many videos so you can ask me doubts if you have and if you want to know more about your exact scenario that you're in right now you don't know how to prepare you need a road map which is specifically tailored to you then you can connect one to one with me the link for that is going to be in the description box as well all right now we move on to the second most important thing and that is development see i will not say dsa is more important or development is more important because i honestly believe both of them are equally important development is important for getting the interview dsa is important for cracking the interview but of course in many companies right now they are asking development also previously it was the case that you know dsa boom you are able to crack almost all of the company it's not the same anymore you have to master development see this is going to be an interesting part of the video because i keep getting questions about this people don't ask me that much questions about dsa even though i'm a dsa teacher right i like teaching dsa i love teaching dsa but people ask me more questions about development because that is what actually confuses people so i want you to listen to this very closely see no matter what domain you're going for as long as it falls under the umbrella of software engineering you need to start learning full stack development i know a lot of people think that oh i'll do python i'll do ai ml i'll do this that no the highest demand right now in the market is for full stack developers see companies will ask for front end or back end but if you have full stack then you will basically come across you'll be able to get shortlisted into all of the companies pretty much right so this is what i want you to focus on learn full stack development start with the basics of course html css javascript all of the resources will be given after that move to front end with react front end you have to learn react that's what i will suggest especially if you're a beginner go with react it's a there's a high demand in the market right now for react after front end in back end you have two options you can go with node or you can go with spring boot my suggestion is spring boot if you love java if you're a java developer if you're a java guy otherwise you can just continue with javascript and move into node js now you know front end and back end create a good full stack project you already know how to create a good project make it unique and of course give it some unique features give it a unique name and deploy it these three things are essential once you do that you have a good project now there are some other things that you can do to increase your chances of getting shortlisted so one thing you can learn is dockerization you can learn a little bit of devops but even more than that one thing that i highly suggest is you start integrating ai in your project see i have repeated this countless times in my one to one session so i'm saying it here as well guys take benefit the thing is companies are looking for someone who knows how to integrate ai companies are not looking for ai ml developers very few companies are actually looking for ai engineers and that too they're looking for experienced folks nobody is hiring freshers for ai ml role right they are asking for freshers who know how to integrate ai who know how to work with llm with their product nobody is asking you to create an ai or create an llm people want to know that you're able to integrate ai into the project that you have that is where that is what you need to do so whatever full stack project you did learn devops learn whatever you can and then integrate ai into it even if it is something as simple as integrating ai chatbot integrating something that just you know summarizes thing using ai using gemini api open ai api but integrate ai into your projects that is essential so once you know everything deploy your project no doubt about it no conflict with that you have to deploy your project and of course give it a good name and then add it to your resume once at the end of three months you have at least two good projects so this is what i suggest again i'm telling you this even though i talk about this in one to one calls let me talk about this here as well give one full stack project or give two full stack projects one or two whatever is fine if you have experience then give one if you don't have experience give two full stack projects the third project you can put something like a uh, you know 
data science, data analysis, or machine learning project that you might have made in college. But at least one or two full stack projects should be there in your resume. All right, now we're done with the big two, which is DSA and development. Now we come to the third most important thing that is CS fundamentals. CS fundamentals may not be that important if you're a you know experienced person, but as a fresher, it is very important. And it is important both for on-campus and off-campus. On-campus companies will also ask you, off-campus companies will also ask you. And it depends company to company, which company will ask what. But in general, of course, you have the four subjects. You have operating system, OOP, object-oriented programming, you have computer networks, and you have DBMS, database management system. Okay. Now, I won't be going too much depth into it because just a few days back, I've made a complete roadmap about how to master CA fundamentals for placements. You can give that a watch. And that video has the list of resources topic-wise. So again, you'll find list of important topics, resources, everything in that video. Check the description box out, at least if you don't want to watch that video. But if you have time, watch that video as well. But these are the four subjects that are very important. One thing is that you don't need to give too much time for CS fundamentals. It is not something that you have to give two hours daily or a lot of time daily. It is fine. You can just take out time whenever you're free and just watch YouTube videos about CS fundamentals and make notes. The one thing that I highly suggest for CS fundamentals is making notes. DSA and development make notes, that's fine. But, you know, if you're not making notes for DSA, I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be like, oh, you have to make notes. But CS fundamentals, you have to make notes. It is mandatory. Without notes, you're going to struggle so much before the interviews. So buy a notebook, which has four divisions, or you can just make notes online. I still prefer the old way of writing with a pen and paper, whatever you want. You can decide accordingly, but you have to make notes. Important topics, I'll give you another video, get the important topics from there and start learning on YouTube, start learning on Geek Geeks for Geeks. So Geeks for Geeks, YouTube, Gate Smashers and a few more channels, that's it, that's all you need for CS Fundamentals, nothing you need more than that. Now, there is one more thing which is sort of a part of OOP, sort of a part, not exactly because it falls under system design and that is low level design. So low level design is not very important if you're a fresher, but still there are companies that will ask low level design such as CRED. Flipkart, Razorpay, these companies will ask design questions. So for low-level design also, I'll give you some great resources. You can give them a watch. Mostly it's just about learning design questions. Once you learn design questions, you're going to get either the same question or just a deviation. So it's not going to be that difficult. You just need to learn it from the right resources, which already I'm giving you in the description box. Now we pass these fundamentals and we're going to talk about something else which is required for placements. But again, this is something not very important. But if you're going for service-based companies, if you're going for a company like TCS and you want to crack the prime role, you're going for Infosys, you want to crack the specialist programmer role, or if you're going for fintech companies like GS, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, or even some of the banking companies that hire for software developers, then you're going to have to master this. This is, of course, aptitude. Aptitude is the easiest thing to do. Trust me, aptitude is the easiest thing to do. It does not require a lot of efforts. The issue with aptitude is that people forget about it. But people just ignore it. What I want you to do, take out half an hour minimum or one hour every day for aptitude. There are three things you need to do in aptitude. You have quantitative or numerical. This is something where people struggle in the most. After that, you have reasoning ability or logical ability, basically your reasoning, logical, these sort of things. And then you have your verbal, which is like your English, etc. So what I want you to do for aptitude, aptitude is all about question answer, all about question answer. It's not, there's no pattern like DSA, there's no you know, like concepts like development, it's easy. All you need to do is solve problems. The more you solve problems, the better you'll be able to retain it. For quantitative, you have formulas, write them down in a sheet of paper and have it by your side for revision. For logical reasoning, you'll have tricks. Again, put it in a sheet of paper and keep it by your side for revision. But mostly it's just about practicing questions. Go on indiabix.com, start practicing questions every day from quantitative to reasoning to verbal. The most important topics are in the description box, so you don't need to go every topic. The most important topics placement wise, I'll give you in the description box. Solve questions from them. Okay. And after you've solved a significant amount of problems, then in the last couple of weeks of this 90 days, you can do a couple of mocks of aptitude on a website like Testbook or Prepinsta or anything. Okay. So you can do that to master aptitude. It's not that difficult. Trust me. It's very easy to do. So now we've covered a significant part of your 90 days place of operation. If I wanted to, I could have ended the video here, but there are a few more things that are very important. And these are few things that people do not talk about. People say DSA karlo, dev karlo, ye karlo, wo karlo. But the main thing, which is essential for cracking a good job, especially if you're from a tier three student, this is something people don't talk about. And this is networking. 
for the next 90 days i want you to do something i want you to take out 10 to 15 minutes every day at least 10 to 15 minutes every day go on linkedin start sending connection requests to people of your dream company you need to have as many connections as you can i go on my top mate sessions and i see people who have 50 connections 60 connections 100 connections it's not going to work my suggestion in god's honest truth my suggestion is you need to have at least 5k plus connections a lot of people think it's absurd but the more connections you have the better it is going to be the better chances you have of getting a referral so again i've made an entire video about how to use linkedin the right way you can give that video a watch but take out 10 to 15 every day minutes time every day send connection requests to people of companies that you want to work in and be active connect with people comment on people's post come into people's eyes post every couple of weeks if you're making a project you can post about the progress if you're learning dsa doing DSA, you can post about it do everything to be in the visibility of the algorithm and be in the visibility of people around you so that when you ask someone for referral they'll get the feeling that they already know you they've seen you and you'll have a higher chance of getting a referral or a message back from them it is just human psychology if you're someone nobody knows there's very less chance that anyone is going to refer you so focus on networking focus on building a good network on linkedin do not avoid it now parallelly you have to work on your resume as well you have to add your lead code to your resume you have to add your projects to your resume if you have any achievements whatever you have good you have to add them in your resume and you have to optimize your resume your resume's keywords you have to optimize your resume's ets code and you have to upload your resume everywhere you have to upload your resume on linkedin you have to upload your resume on uh, knockery insta hire everywhere and you have to keep it updated you have to do this every day and trust me if you go if you apply for 15 20 jobs every day you might get a call back from around one two or three right so the selection rate is around 10 percent if you apply for 100 companies you can get call back from 10 of them and that is in a good case scenario it is truly a numbers game job market is not that easy it is all about how much efforts you're putting how much time you're giving to the job hunting phase now one more bonus tip for you after you're done with the preparation of course you're going to be applying you'll be getting interview opportunities before the interview always and always go through the interview experiences of that company read at least five six, five, six articles watch a couple of videos on youtube and be sure that you know what the company is going to ask majority of the times literally 70 to 80 percent of the times the companies are going to ask you the same thing they've asked in the past because for interviews companies are not you know inventing new questions they are just asking the same questions with little deviation for OA round it might be difficult OA round they will have new questions because they have OA for many people interview is one-on-one -on -one, so they cannot afford new questions for every student right so interviews are not going to be that difficult you just need to know what you're going to be asked and every company has a different way every company has a different thing that they ask that's why interview experiences are extremely important now once you do all of this for 90 days trust me you're going to see a lot of difference you're going to feel comfortable you're going to feel confident and you'll feel deserving of your dream job see the job market is tough but you do all of these things you have a good profile you have good skills you keep applying you will get a job i've seen many people who keep continuously applying building up their skills and eventually they get placed into their dream company it is a matter of perseverance that's all it is about you cannot give up you have to spend time learning upskilling job hunting and trust me you're gonna get a good job and you're gonna see a surge in hiring anyways from january onwards so your chances are going to be increasing i just want you to be ready for that okay so yeah that's pretty much it if you have any doubts then you can ask me in the comments i'll be happy to answer everyone there so you can ask me anything you have in the comments and if you have something you want to discuss one to one with me you want to share your personal situation and you want my personal guidance in one to one session then you can connect one to one with me over talk meet as well so yeah that's pretty much it check the descriptions out it is gonna be a gold mine in the description you're gonna see so many important resources so check it out and yeah let's see you in the next video